set up think tank wide human humane architecture. Can we get the first slide up uh, to introduce to what we will talk uh, about today? Um, we're still in the COVID 19 block, the lockdown, which especially our island of Hawaii uh, is pretty is hard. Uh, is, 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 uh, really hit hard. Um, and uh, so uh, we want to take advantage of the dilemma and turn it into the opportunity or the virtue to uh, think about what we've been done in the past to project about how we're going to continue to do it in the future differently, most likely. And so uh, we are dominated by hospitality and by the hotel industry. And the firm that has impacted that most is the firm that was called in the 60s when it was founded. It was called Killingsworth Brady Smith. And it was renamed in the mid-80s uh, into Killingsworth um, Stricker, Lindgren, Wilson, and Associates. And our friends, um, uh, Don Hibbert, uh, who we see at the very top right, had brought two late partners of the firm uh, to present uh, to us at a Dokomomo uh, talk story. And uh, pictures on the right, the two in the middle, you see the then gentleman who was then uh, doing the lecture, that's Mr. Ron Lindgren, who you saw and I had done numerous shows about the killing of birth body of birth. In that top picture of the two, you see what uh, Ron pointed out to his partner, uh, Larry Stricker, who uh, built all these fantastic models. They're so intricate. And uh, Larry participated in the Dokomo uh, box story by having delivered and, and basically offered this delicious wine that he makes himself uh, over at Napa Valley in California. And from there, we're having uh, this Larry Stricker with us. Hi, Larry. <laughs> so, so good to have you on the show. Talk a little bit about um, your your estate out there in your winery, which we then also oh. want to use to see and have it post on your mother to sell though, because tomorrow it is uh, her 100th birthday. And a special toast on her yeah. with Larry's delicious wine. Yeah. And we had the chance to uh, uh, enjoy it and over the talk story. Yeah. So tell us a little about you and Napa Valley, Larry. Oh, we, uh, my wife and I first visited Napa in the early 80s. And uh, we uh, had lived in property for four years and I found this uh, actually uh, unimproved for the acres on, on Mount Peter, which is the mountain range on the west side of the valley. In the photo there, you see the, the valley fog in below, and we're up at uh, 1,700 feet above the valley. It's uh, actually, uh, Mount Peter is a volcano, so very good gravelly soil, and it's uh, great for growing the short Indian path. We uh, kind of figured in '86 and uh, made our first wine in '90. And uh, we're primarily a grower. We sell grapes to a half dozen other wineries, and we make a few hundred cases for our own label. And it's uh, the best of both worlds, wine and alcohol. I guess that's to the next slide, very smooth transition, because the next slide is uh, talking about volcanic activity. Uh, in the previous shows, uh, Larry, we have primarily shown you guys work on Oahu and also one project uh, which you and Larry designed uh, on Maui, which is unfortunately torn down. And today, you will take us to another island. And let's tell us about which island that is, which we actually see in the picture. So we're on the big island on the Mahala uh, Coast, which has uh, been the, probably the, the driest portion of the island. We, we see the uh, average of 15 inches of rain per year. So the, the great thing about uh, the location of Mahala is it's, it's, uh, if you do get rain, it's, it's, it's good for a couple hours. It's not uh, not anything where your stay would be 
And there's the basic structure, although, of course, it has not been finished yet. And uh, when the hotel was finished, when we go to the next picture, uh, again, the family was invited to attend the opening. We had a special group of just family members. And here again, picture of me on the right, my brother on the left, and uh, the lady is one of our cousins, who is, again, a family member. And we got to go to see the hotel right when it was just opening and got to stay there and had it introduced to us. And that was very special and wonderful. And in the next picture, there is me coming down the stairway with my sister-in-law, but on the right is a picture of the lobby or the atrium next to the lobby as it appeared at the time when the hotel was first built. And now we can go to Larry who can tell us from the inside what this whole process was like for the construction and the design of the Mama Lani Hotel. Well, let's go to the next slide, and that actually uh, demonstrates, illustrates that you guys could have met each other because this is the same event of the opening. And Derry, uh, you're on the very left, just as Ron always describes you as the huge, big bear <laughs> with the, the fingers that was able to make these intricate little models. <laughs> talking and talking about that. And your wonderful wife, Colette, next to you, and then also describe to us some of the other people and their their, their functions and projects. <clears throat> yeah, there was, uh, next to my wife would be uh, uh, two gentlemen from, from Tokyo Land Company, Asakura and Osaki, and then the, the uh, gentleman in the white jacket was Yusho Tanaka, who was kind of the... He was the CEO at the Hawaiian region, and then kind of the, the go between between uh, Tokyo Company and, uh, and 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 the hotel development, the people that put the criteria together as far as number of rooms, uh, hall rooms, meeting space, and so on, and then uh, the Reverend Akaka and. Uh, uh, Nick Klotz on, and uh, Manfred Bragg on the extreme right. Nick Klotz was also worked with uh, Tanaka and was kind of instrumental in putting the hotel program together. So that, that's the, yeah. kind of the, the founding fathers. And this, this was, this was a, such a special project for me because in uh, in 79, when I first started on the project and developed, uh, went through several, uh, several iterations to come up with the initial concept, uh, Chairman Goto, uh, once, once we had uh, the approval of the Hawaiian region uh, managers, uh, uh, he said the presentation would be in Tokyo on December 23rd. So we, we planned our Christmas vacation uh, in, for Tokyo, and we carried a model of the uh, of the concept, and and stayed almost true to identical to the to the model that was built back then. Anyway, uh, February 14th, 1980, was, was uh, my wife and I uh, were married, and spent our honeymoon on the beach. We had uh, built a tower and set up the wind machine, and uh, so we could check the views. And, uh, and so, and then three years later, same date, February 14th, uh, we had the hotel opening. So it's always been a, a special, uh, special place for us. Wow! And let's go to the next slide. That gives us an overview. And and you were explaining to us that originally everyone was more or you guys have been thinking about an all cottage concept, right? But then tell us why that changed and how it's now looked. You, see there? you know, I, I think uh, Chairman Goto was was uh, very much in favor of uh, the all cottage concept. Uh, the uh, the actual hotel operators who had been operating the Hawaiian region knew what the uh, servicing costs for maid servants and maintenance and having 350 rooms spread out in that 
that site, uh, how that would impact the economies of the project. So they quickly got us in, in the in the direction of a more centralized building rather than and and we knew we in order to do that we had to be in, in the in the six story uh, realm. And then also we, we see the the shape of the uh, beachfront portion of the hotel takes it safe from the, the existing beach. We also had a wind machine set up and, and uh, arranged the uh, different dining facilities where the, where we had the best protection from the wind. So it, it was a, a process that that uh, uh, that happened through the design development and the layout. And again, with respect to the, the site, to integrate the, the, the beautiful fish ponds and the, the uh, whole aspect of, of being at, at the special site, bringing that into the hotel atrium. Mm -hmm. And if we go to the next slide, here we see at the very bottom, we see that iconic sort of front end, uh, sort of, you know, being a, a ziggurat and basically wedged. Um, pyramided and at the very top left I threw in because Jay Fidel charged me when we were talking about the project we we're developing with a student she called Cargo Cabana Courtyard Clustered which is basically a shipping container stacked um, naturally forming as a pyramid and he said it reminds me of the Kona Hilton and Kona Hilton is the one left of that and that's another Pete Wimberley project so Interesting, um, would be great for another sort of table talk panel discussion about these kind of synergies be between, um, you, you colleagues, but we probably better save that for another show. But that's actually a good idea for another show. So let's keep that in right. mind. Get to go to the next slide, uh, Larry here. And, um, again, um, to the left is, is our, uh, is sort of in mind mandatory biochromatic check, which we always do with every building. And no surprise to us, because just like the other Killingsworth projects, they're very well balanced with the elements. Um, if you look at the north era, there's hardly any facade that's really hit by the sun. And if it is, uh, the facade is, is basically shaped in a way that you can see at the very, uh, at the very right, at the right picture. And also everything is single loaded corridors. So it's very easy breezy, as we like to call it. The picture, I have a little contribution to the show, uh, too, because the picture that you see here I took when I was first uh, experiencing a new building, Larry, that was uh, soon after I arrived in Hawaii uh, when our former dean, Clark Llewellyn, had an advisory council uh, a meeting there in February uh, 2013. And shame on me, and please students don't do that, what your professor did wrong. I didn't do my homework. I didn't familiarize myself who the architect was, but I think in this case, as an uh, uh, excuse um, to the rule, um, uh, I, I wasn't biased, so I was able to actually fully experience things without thinking about the ownership uh, and the authorship. So here you can really see how you sculpture the facade uh, using the sun as a, as a co-designer. So that that's very impressive. And the next slide is another picture um, I was taking out the lobby. And the lobby just looked like, again, the facade of the lobby looked like the exterior facade. So there's actually no exterior or interior. Everything feels outside in and inside out. Very, very impressive. So um, if we go to the next slide. Um, there has been, I remember uh, from, uh, the literature, Larry, that the original budget was like something 70 million. And just recently, a renovation has been completed that was budgeted for 100 million. And we read, and we read, and it ended up being 200 million dollars. And that one has just been completed. And to the next slide, and for, for the next couple of slides, they're from you, Larry, because you once again, in your tradition of always having been yet there at the right time, you were there again for the reopening. So please walk us through the pictures and share with us your impressions about how it has been remodeled in regards of your original, uh, yeah. 
So this this is the view from the uh, lobby looking out over the pool area. And uh, the nice thing that's happened is over, over the 30 years, the, the landscaping had taken over and we had lost a lot of the view to the ocean. And so with, with this new uh, uh, pool area, that openness has, has been brought back. And, and I think that uh, really uh, it, it, it's, it's something that, due to the, the overgrowing of the landscaping, uh, was lost, and so it, it's very refreshing to, to have this uh, this view back. And, it, and I think the the only detriment I think I mentioned that we originally had a snack bar under that large bilo tree in the center, and and it kept the, with each change in, in the manager, the because people always enjoy eating at the ocean side, the uh, the kitchen grew bigger, the seating got to be bigger, and it, it just got to be a, more of a structure. They had a, toilet facilities out there. It just got to block a lot of the view. So I, I think we're, we're back to more of what, what was there originally. Okay. Let's go to the next slide and, you know, turn towards the building and share with us your feelings about these sort of alterations about that sort of big open dining lanai. Yeah, the, the lanai was always there. I think uh, I, I think they maybe got a little heavy-handed with the wood cladding of the, of the concrete. I think the, it didn't look as, as heavy and with the, with the white uh, concrete uh, posts and beams. So that, that yeah. uh, but it, it, it goes with the new wood suit and wood flooring they, they've added to the interior. So it, they are, have kept some continuity. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about how well that will weather, but, uh, we, we, we shall see. Yeah. No, I mean, your problem to deal well. with, Larry. It's somebody else's problem well, to deal with. Right. And we, and we should, yeah, and let's go to the next slide and thanks for, Chipping that into Soto because we have to say, as you guys, which you always have the most respect that you guys for half a century trade, stay true to your philosophy and through very sort of turbulent times of here, we're talking the mid of postmodernism, you guys stayed modern all the way through you guys' work from, you know, the original partners and then through you guys. So that's, that's very impressive. So as we see here, and that's the entrance to Fort Fort Share that you just sort of showed us under construction when you witnessed it. And here it still looks the same. It's just a little bit and a little less heavy handed touched up here with these sort of green, uh, dividers that, uh, more, more touched lightly in this case, right? I think the only thing we've lost there were Bogan Villas and that planter in the foreground on uh, uh, the beam that it uh, spans the width of the court course area. So, again, mm -hmm. it's a, a, a maintenance item that, that we decided not to uh, to continue with. As as in the interior of the atrium, at, at uh, every third level were were, uh, were planters with uh, uh, festooning vines coming down, and a, a lot of that uh, was. Required some maintenance that they just didn't feel was was necessary. Yeah, and that, that is actually I'm glad you mentioned that because that's one of the very iconic killing for uh, signature elements. It's like the, the integrated planter trough that we always admire, and we encourage all the clients to not be lazy. And you know, you guys designed it so. And there's projects, enough projects that we pointed out that they are still able to do it. So we were encouraged to this hotel team, especially when they spend so much money, right? They should be able to pull that extra mile. Really good point, Larry. Let's go to the next slide. Um, and, uh, yeah, share with us a little bit your impressions about the, the kind of first national, uh, you know, towards the, the entrance of the, the hotel. Yeah, I, I think the, the thing that was lost was the, the beautiful blue tile that we had uh, from, from the Fort Cochere all the way into the atrium and down, down to the base uh, of the lobby. 
But uh, again, it, it's a new uh, a new coat, a new wood coat to the inside, and, and they were consistent with that theme. So I, I think uh, the bones still show through, and and uh, things still still work. We we did have even in the, in the old design, we did have uh, some koi ponds and fish ponds on either side of the walkway to the entrance. Those have, have been uh, deleted. So, and and let's revisit that in the in the in the second half of the show next time because these are things that you guys mentioned that are worth uh, revisiting. So let's go to the next slide, which is actually a, a night impression of that. So what you're saying, it, it's very sort of bling, right? It, it tries to show off. It tries to. Uh, your architecture was always very um, uh, restrained and, and very humble, very elegant. And, and here, it, 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 they, they put some, in time, some heavy makeup on that we think, you know, it might have not been exactly. to that extent. Yeah. No. <laughs> and we will, uh, the next project you're going to show us um, is actually a project where you had very, very cleverly, perfectly, absolutely stunningly beautiful integrated the lighting into the architecture. But that's for later. So let's go to the next slide, and um, we have to um, almost uh, close on that one because we're almost out of time. But this is a rendering here from the projection uh, from when the project was still on the drafting board and in the marketing. And so this is a computer rendering. And uh, next slide is um, pretty much the the execution and share with us very quickly because we only have a minute left uh, your uh, your emotions and feelings about what they made out of it. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the animation of the space was lost. We had, again, uh, a, uh, a stage area where there could be Hawaiian music and seating area where, where, where it was more animated with people. And also, again, the fish ponds, the, the kids used to love to look at the fish and the hammerhead shark in the, in the water. But, uh, yeah, again, uh, it's, it's a new, uh, a new look. I guess so. And let's uh, contemplate more about that, um, when we come back with the volume two of the show about uh, Larry Stricker and his Mamalani Hotel. And until then, thank you very much, Larry, for having been with us and introducing us. Thank you to Soto. So um, you guys all stay safe and sound. Uh, say happy birthday from us to Soto. Oh, yes, I will. Very will. wonderful birthday. And until then, please all stay safe and sound as, and as tropically exotic and exotically tropical as Larry and Ron. Bye, guys. Bye.